And of course, on this channel again, this is why we cannot have nice things. You can get a punch. Now I gotta get a punch. Oh. We're in like Flynn. According to the computation device, that is top dead center most. See how wobbly that is? That is, that's a bent or out of round rim. That's not good. I'm, oh my goodness. There, phone's muted. Somebody needs to try to shoot. Actually, you know, this thing actually broke. I need to actually fix that. That's, that's not gone right. Hello everybody, today's assignment is swapping tires on the New Yorker, putting on some new ones rather. I can't in good conscience sell these things with the sidewall starting to split like that. Plus the man who's picking it up, he's got a long road trip ahead of him and I want to make sure he gets home safely. As you can see, <laughs> these tires are is no good. We gotta swap them out. Technically I've seen worse, but... She's cracked along the bead of the tire as well. We got some good cracking going up in here too. These tires are ready to let loose, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> right, tire swap day. Here we go. Pump it, pump it. This thing even come on. Close the valve. Silly. Right. And of course, on this channel again, this is why we cannot have nice things. This is a standard lug nut. This is an anti-theft lug nut. And of course, when you buy an anti-theft lug nut car. Uh, chances are the socket's not going to be anywhere on the car. The ashtray, trunk, glove box, no, 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 no. 95% of the time, you're, you're, um, you're heat manning that thing right off, which is what we're going to do, unfortunately. Again, this is why we just cannot have nice things. <laughs> so what you want to do is take a sacrificial socket. In this case, this is one I desperately need for my service rig. And we're just going to stick it in there and we're just going to smash on it like the Hulk. Hulk smash until it fits on there. Something like that. And get break a bra on, break, break a bore on here. Oh, except, okay. I've had these ones off technically, the rear one's not, but I'll need to bust the other ones out right quick. I've had this wheel off before, so I know these lug nuts will come off. We'll try to hit up the rear, because I don't think I've pulled the rear tires off. And see what an actual challenge will be to get those lug nuts off. Now, obviously, you don't want to do this with the car tires off the air, because you can't actually have any traction, or nothing's holding the wheel, so you just spin, spin, spin. But, anyways, there you go. Let's, uh, let's hit up the other four right quick. Except, I did get a punch. Now I gotta get a punch. Oh. Okay. So then, you zoom out. All right. That was fairly easy. All right. Well, let's work on the back ones. Those will actually be legit. It's stuck on there. That one doesn't have any. Okay, this is more confusing. Another one right here. I'll get another hamp. Got a hamp. That positively engaged. Now. I think it's working. Kind of have to hold this up here. These. These true spoke rims are a little kind of hard to get at some of those sockets. I have to have an extension, which causes flex, and there you go. 
We're in like Flynn. Right. So you do this for about 3,000 hours. And you might actually have a lug nut to actually take off now. There you go. And of course, it's still stuck on there because you, you pounded the ever-living bahooty out of it, as I told you to do. So then, you just go like this. Actually, we're going to zoom out. And then, you just grab it here and just... There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now that that has been thoroughly demonstrated, I'll actually start taking off some tires and actually swapping them out. Hey. Take note, children. Don't ever do this. These are not impact rated extension and socket. However, my insurance company is sleeping in today. They don't know about it, so we don't. Hey ho, here we go. Ooga -dooga -ta. Yes. All right, here we go. More evidence of cracking right along here. These these tires are really done. <laughs> they uh honestly they they their time on earth is very short, these tires. I got some old valve cores. Nope, not yet. Let that bleed out. Okay, then we gotta move you guys over here. Oh, look, new tires. Mm -mm. I like those with one pop and they pop right off. Love it. Well, it meant working on old passenger tires, bad working on the truck tires, these new passenger tires, that's for certain. Outer. There we go. Now she's broken loose. Now before we disassemble the tire, of course, we need to actually, uh, or disassemble the wheel. Rim, tire, wheel. You gotta take your weights off. Alright. See, I was just gonna be lazy and just have the turntable turn here. Like that. Now we don't have to lift up the tire. Just whoosh, there's the back. Hey, look at that. Isn't that fabulous, darlings? Quit bumping the camera. All right. There's a big one here. Oof. This is a three ouncer. Woo! -hoo. Those are big. That's a big one. Hang on to that. Now. Go ahead and retract the dealios. Put the dare down the den and put the dealio back on. Look at that. Now we can work with that. Then you bring your duck head around. Yes, this is actually called a duck head. As you can see, obviously it resembles a duck and its beak. Maybe put a little eye there, maybe one of these days. <laughs> Anyways, that's called a duck head. Gosh darn, it's already getting too hot out here. Ugh. Wish fall would come a little bit faster. Well, sort of. I do and I don't. Right. Okay. And grab your lube. Helps your machine out. We obviously we don't care about the junk tire, but it helps your machine out. Less lugging down, less stress on it. Alright, so then we adjust our duck head. Which is over here. Just that's right about to where it's not touching the rub pad. Okay. Hook. Over. Turn. Alright. Then. Here we 
go again. Bish bash bosh. In theory. Come on. There you go. And there we go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. However, these are old enough for school tires. You can actually do it manually if you wanted to, but honestly, that just breaks my back. And today's flavor, same size, 225, 75, R15s. And yes, we have blue walls. No, it's actually a white wall. It's a, co it's a coating they uh, put on there to preserve the whiteness of the white wall. And we'll clean these up at the end. We'll show them. But now we want to leave this blue on here in case my grimy hands get on it. It'll still preserve the white. You can stay there. So then what you do, stay, is you reach down in here if your machine has one. Once again, you grab your lube, lube up the bead. Okay. Now obviously, <laughs> There's only white walls on one side, so make sure the rim's facing up. <laughs> no. Okay. Sometimes you can actually just... Nope. Sometimes you can just bar them over if you got old school enough tires. Just feeling really lazy. Okay. So what you do here, you just run it over the here and underneath the duck head to install the tire. Like that. Easy squeezy lemon peasy. I know a lot of people can't afford these machines. Honestly, I had to take a 401k loan out of my daily job so I can uh, afford one because my back can just not tolerate doing it, you know, with the old manual tire changers and whatnot. This is <laughs> I gotta preserve my back in case I either go full time with this or my channel gets any bigger, so I just need to think about my health. So, no rambling here, we need to seat the bead. This machine does have a bead seeder. The jet's on the bottom, as I had shown uh, when I first got this machine. Don't know if it'll work or not, but if not, I got a manual bead seeder we use for uh, semi-trucks. Probably end up using that instead, but we'll see here. I gotta get my muffs on. Where's my muffs? My muffs, there we go. Muffs. And it works. Beats you to work on this one. It's an old school tire, so it works really well. Oh, forgot to release the clamp. There you go. Make sure you release your clamp first before you blow your tire up. <laughs> Okay, I gotta get a valve core ready. New valve core ready. Okay. See what we're running. I got about 30 PSI in there. These tires are rated for about... Um, 50 PSI. I think I'm going to hold them about 40 PSI. When you go with the uh, tire guys, you know, the commercial shops, they seem to pump it up to maximum. This is a luxurious car. So what we want to do is we want to deflate them just a little bit so you get that nice squishy ride. So this, these are rated at 50 PSI. We'll hold them at about 40, maybe 44, 42 PSI. That should give it a good ride. There we are, right about 40. You guys can't see that. We're right about 40. We'll reset it and do it again, just to make sure. And about 42. Perfect. Good enough. This tire is... Uh oh This tire is ready to go to the wash rack. And I'll have you know, my wash rack also double as my front lawn. Check that out. Get, get. Mm. Yay. Hey, glug, glug, glugs. That's precise. Uh, I need some hose.
Oh, look at that white come on. Look at that. I know there's some rust, surface rust on the wires themselves, but spokes, excuse me. Ugh. Whatever. But uh these should clean up fairly nicely. Let's be honest, this is the first time these wheels have been gotten a good scrubbing ever. It's been many, many years. So we want to do right by the new owner. He's an awesome guy. Older gentleman. He respects these older cars and he wants to use this as a daily driver. So we're going to try to set him up with the best possibility for success driving back home. He's got a couple thousand miles journey back home. Initially I thought I'd do it for you guys, but honestly I have a full-time job and it's almost winter time. I need to save up vacation when things get slow uh, at my work in the winter time. So I'd love to make the drive with you guys and we might do that someday. Have a nice little road trip, but I can't afford it right now. I can't afford to take time off because just like a lot of you guys, I'm sure we're all living paycheck to paycheck. Just this inflation nonsense. We're just trying to scrape by for a living. We can do what we got to do. So, uh, but maybe someday when the channel will support itself. All right. Maybe we can do something fun like that. Ah. Woo. Be still my beating heart. Yeah, the true, boat, true spoke symbol came off, came unglued. I'll just leave it off and let the new owner tack it on how he wishes. So that for, I don't have to worry about this coming unglued with my poor handiwork. <laughs> oh, oh yes. I mean, look at that tread depth. Oh yes. Oh yes. Right then. All right. Flip the view preview camera. So at least I know you guys are halfway on the shot. Hey! Put that on the spindle. This on here. This goes on here. We'll go the tire a bit. Rotate it by hands to make sure it's not woo 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 woo. Looks pretty even. Right. Stop. We will be using our fabulous Snap On WB260A model. This is a hand balancer. Although it does do dynamic balancing, so inboard and outboard. The only catch 22 about this is you gotta spin this up by hand. So we got three of them here. We got the wheel diameter, it's 15 inch rim, so that's fine. Uh, rim width, how you get your rim width is you take your calipers, which look like these big, huge honking things, and there is our numbers. So then you just, so then you just literally measure the width of your rim right here, pretty much where the weights go. Just clamp it right here. Out. And it looks like it's about a just a little click over seven inches. So basically it's a seven inch wide rim. So we got it set at seven. I got it right about seven. If you want to adjust it, you gotta adjust it a little bit, then there you go. So let's we'll put it right there. And then the last measurement is our offset, which is this guy here. Basically telling the computer where is the tire located on the machine. So over here, we just put this again to where the weight of the tire goes. And it's about six and a quarter, it looks like. Right there is where we're looking at. It's just over six. Okay. So with the six, we'll just, uh, there's six. There's six and a quarter. That should be good enough. Right. Now we're actually ready to spin it up. This is not really a tutorial on this particular wheel balancer. There's plenty of them out there, but anyways, you spin it up till you hear the beep and then it does the maths. It'll stop it and it'll tell us what we need to do. Hey, all right, let's go ahead and spin her up. Okay, what do we got? Okay, so this is inboard. They want an ounce and a quarter on that side, and outboard is almost two and a half. Wow. 
These rims are a little bit off. That's all right. Okay, we'll start with M board first, which is this guy. So, I have an inch quarter. So then we got liner up. Right about there is the top of the tire. And this is a 1.25. So I'll go ahead. Don't you break and fall off. Okay. And then we need to do the outboard, which is pretty darn close to the same. Two and a half. Ooh, I don't know if I have a two and a half. Two and a half. So look at the stockpile. They only make them add up to two nowadays. I don't have. I got old school two and a quarters. They don't make the big huge uh, like the uh, like the five. That's a five ounce weight. They don't make them big anymore, unfortunately. Show a uh, quarter here. So one. That's you know, that's two fifty. We'll have to just put two of them on there, which is fine. Or you can put a two and a quarter on there. You basically just have to do uh, maths. According to the computation device, that is top dead center most. Now, because we have to split these up, we gotta we can't just go at the very tippy top here. We have to offset it maybe like that. And we pray that we're centered enough. We'll see if it balances out or not. Then I'll get my aim right. Let's try that again, eh? Shit, there we go. Oh, my, there we go. There we go. That's two and a half on the outside. All right, let's spin it up and see what we get. We spin it up. It's all balanced out. We should have zero come up on here on the display. Here we go. Wait for it. Oh, we're off just by a little bit. Where are we at? M board, they want a quarter inch. Outboard. Outboard. Zeroed out. Alright, so we got we got we need to put a little bit more weight on the M board. Which can happen. Especially when you're dealing with uh, rims that are a little bit tweaked. <laughs> um they want a quarter ounce on here. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. I hate quarters though. They are so tiny, you probably won't, wouldn't feel the difference. I mean, look how small these are. These quarters are so flippin' small. Now, yes, full disclosure, I am using old school lead weights. I like the style. They're a lot slimmer. They look nicer on the car versus the big, ugly steel ones they make nowadays. <laughs> They're so small to handle. They're so rinky-dinky, it's just... <laughs> Uh, it drives me nuts sometimes trying to put them on, but this ain't no NASCAR, but you know, if it's a little bit off balance it, it's on the computer, it's going to drive me nuts. So that's pretty much the top. Now let's see if this works. So we'll just spin her up again and hopefully we get a zero out of it. She balanced out. That is a perfectly balanced tire. Look at that. Sweet. Off again. Now, before we mount these, full disclosure, the old lug nuts and washers are absolutely hideous. They are definitely worn. They got a little bit of surface rust on there. The washers of themselves are is absolutely smashed. You can see we've got a nice bevel going on here. Yeah, they're not supposed to be beveled like that. I want to do right by the new owner, so we got brand new hardware. We have 20 new lug nuts, as well as 20 brand new shiny washers to go along with those. Oh, beautiful. First of all, there is an inner spacer on the inside of the rim, but the lug studs don't want to center very well at all. So what I'm trying to do is trying to wiggle this around just enough 
So that stud is just in the center enough so we can get a cap on there or a lug nut on there. It's not the, <laughs> I don't like this style, but it's nice and pretty once you get it all figured out. I'm just trying to wiggle the tire a little bit. Just trying to get enough of a clearance here to get these darn things on. I never dealt with spacers like this, so. Honestly, this is a bit new for me, but I definitely don't, <laughs> you don't have much grip on your uh, lug studs. Or at least the lug studs are, they don't come out enough where the rim will center on them. It's kind of recessed in there now with the spacer in there, but oh well. And now you can see, once you get the st lug, st lug nuts started, they'll, uh, they'll eventually, those studs will center themselves once it finds its happy place. We'll torque those down at the very end. Okay, I'll go ahead and put our center cover on now. All right, and guys, stop yelling now. I finally hear you. I'll put the valve stem cap back on there. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Right then. Shall we rinse and repeat, y'all? Very nice. Yeah, that'll do all right. Sounds like someone needs to do some freaking trimming with their veg. The veg is just getting out of hand. <clears throat> yeah, will that do? No. Fine, can we just zoom in to override that? No, not really. Yeah, a box cutter should work. There. Now is the camera. Yeah, it's fine. Set up to adjust for brightness to auto. No, it should already be in auto. Hush. Off. Now it's time for some whistling Dixie. Or whistling tire, rather. Squeaky tire. I mean, I'll be a thing. I don't know. Um, right, here we go. I like it when that bead breaks in one shot. Love it. Yeah. Full disclosure, I was playing around with one of these tires and this was it. Because I put one of my new weights on here. I wanted to see if the tire machine would even be able to... I could even mount this up because I never mounted a wire wheel. And for this particular wire wheel, yes, I can uh, use my tire balancer as you guys have already seen. All right, that's a one ouncer. That goes in the one ounce. Okay, we got a weight here, so we'll just... Plob that off right there. There we go. Easy as pie. Ooh, hello. That's a yeah, ounce and a half. Um, we'll go ahead and dismount. Oof. Mark cloth thingy. My claws good? Yeah, they are. Holy. Okay. All right. Foot action. Uh oh. I catch it between cycles or not? Oh. Then All right. So what I'm doing with my duck head is this black piece is the, um, it's kind of like UHMW, it's a hard plastic. Um, I line that up just so it's just off of the tire. So therefore when you put load on it, it just barely rubs it. So, mount, dismount the tire. 
Again, take your tire iron here, go over the duck head, make sure it goes over that little lip right there. Sometimes you can need to help it out a little bit and uh, turn it right round baby like round, like a record baby. And then grab the other side, claw it down below, grab the other side, and rinse and repeat. There you go. Bob, your uncle, aunties, you're fine. Is she, though? We don't know. We just don't know, do we? Or maybe you do know. Ooh, that's over right here. The next week, this week, this week, ravings of a lunatic on the Sweet Machine Channel. Boo! Why do people gotta open up their turbos like that? Sounds, I don't know. Sounds goofy. Boo! Psh! Boo! Oh. Whatever. Rantings! More and more rantings, yes! <laughs> well, look at this, another white wall tire. These said these have alignment indicators on them. Mm, isn't that fancy? You have no idea how that works. That's okay. I don't have an alignment rack. Oh, to have a shop with an alignment rack. Oh, yes. I don't think we'll ever get there. But, you know, a lot of things have happened in this universe. Okay, we are lubrication. Remember, lubrication is never a bad thing. Always use as much as you need. Don't be shy about it. These are nice tires, so you want to be a little bit more gentle with them, so. And again, with these old school tires, you can just bar over the inner inner bead most of the time. Maybe not. There it goes. I like it when that happens. Working with old school tires is just so much easier than those modern low pros. Like our Volvo 2006 Volvo S80. Those are like a 45 aspect ratio. Those are tight. Okay. Slip over here under the duck head. The rebound. Something like that. There we go. What? White walls up. Tires on the outside. Or tires facing up. That's good. Rims facing up. Whatever. All right. Yep. Okay. We've got our air up in here. Focus the camera. Once again, we'll use our bead seeder. I'll show you what those bead seeders are after this. We get this entire play for those of you who subscribe to the channel and don't look at the previous videos. I will show you what they look like. That one did not work. I thought I had charged back up again. I think we got it this time. Pump it up a little bit more. Pump it, pump it up. Dun, 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 dun. Hey! Dun, 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 dun. Hey! Dun, 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 dun. Hey! 40. Ah, a couple more clicks. Whatever the heck a click is. Rat Hey! You giving up on me? Ah, 43. Good enough. I guess I don't need a shop. I got my headphones on. Woo. Right. Now we're going to balance it, and then we're going to wash it. Rinse and repeat thereof with the rear axle. Mm-hmm. The bead seeder are these four jets right next to the clamp. They just psh, shoot air fast as it can into the rim of the tire or just outside the rim of the tire in theory it will blow up the tire and self 
seat under the rim. Anywho, of course that's activated by the foot control down here. And somebody needs to tie their shoe. Actually, you know, this thing actually broke. I need to actually fix that. That's, that's not gone right. Shower balanced. Looks like it's riding true enough. Right, let's spin this bad boy up. But first, let's get you a closer view at these shenanigans. All right, spinning up. What have you got? Okay, we got two and a half outboard and inboard is uh ounce and three quarters. Wow. Well though I'm really not surprised with wire. I've to be honest, full disclosure, I've never balanced a wire wheel before, so um you know, this is my first time. It's kind of kind of fun. Let's try and guess how off balance these are. Now, it could be off balance because of the tire, too, all right? Whole number effect. Yeah, you can see it's not balanced because the tire is uh, going to the heaviest point. So let's see, what do we say? So for our close up here, I'm watching where the position of the wheel is at. So if I rotate it, you can see how it goes. It's pretty darn sensitive. And once that triangle there lights up, I know that I'm straight to Top, top dead center, I guess if you will say, I guess. So it, seven, okay. Uh, quarter there. Okay, inboard and then outboard is, let's say two and a quarter, two and a half. So we need two one and a quarter here, just like the other side. Huh, maybe it is the rims. So, according to the computer, that right there is exact the Mundo top bed center, which is right where the spindle is. So, um, I'm going to be just offset just a little bit. That's probably why the other one. We had to put an extra quarter ounce on the inside because I didn't get these exactly centered. All right. Who's dinging my phone now? Knock it off. See how the wheel is slowly rotating but it's not rotating at all? That tells us we're getting pretty close to being in balance. So, we got the computer screen. Let's get this caliper out of here so you guys actually can see something. I know people don't like a cluttered up background, but guys, I'm working in a very, very small garage, okay? <laughs> All right, spinning up. Ah, we're close. We need a quarter ounce on outboard. M board's clear. Oh, okay. All right, then let's go ahead and uh, kind of curious to know where that, uh, where is that quarter ounce go? Right up top. Okay, see, it's, um, it says quarter rounds right here. So actually what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm going to shift the weights over oh, about half an inch or so and see if that helps. That might actually clear it up. So I'm just going to move it over just a snudge like this. See, that's what I like about... Why am I yelling? That's what I like about the um, old wheels. They still have the old weights. I can go up to five ounces. They don't make those anymore. I think the most they make is like a two and a half ounce weight. So you're left with doubling it up, which I really don't like. Which is why I love scouring, or will be scouring for the old weights. Because, you don't have to deal with this monkey business so much. Alright, now I just moved the weights. We didn't put a quarter ounce 
on. So let's just see if it self balances now. Let's see what happens here. Come on, baby, light my fire, as the doors once said. Come on. Yes! Check that out. Oh. Oh. I'm just, oh, I'm just so awesome. <laughs> said no one ever. All right, off you get. Good, because I didn't want to screw with uh, quarter ounce weights. They can be a bit of a bugger. Wash rack. Coming right under you guys. Hello. Excuse me. This blue's really sticking on here. This might take a minute or two to unscrub it. Wow, that blue's really embedded. Gosh darn it. I think once upon a time they actually just used adhesive tape instead of this chemical they brush on there, this dye, but whatever it is, but it's not coming off so easily. That might be something that the weather takes off, I don't know yet. Well, a little bit of time has passed. This, the yellow's, or the yellow. <laughs> the blue's not coming off very well, so I think Mother Nature will have to probably end up taking it off. I keep scrubbing on it. Maybe this was an older tire. I don't No, it was made in 23. I checked the code on it. Oh well. Well, I just have to let Mother Nature take it off. It looks wide enough from a distance. That'll be alright. Okay. What I'll do, Donkey. What I'll do. Do you think this will be a one hour episode of me just changing four tires? Now, see, here's the problem. I can do one tire for you guys, get all the camera angles and stuff, but I know some of you guys don't mind longer format uh, videos. You know, it takes half an hour, but you guys can see me screw up and blunder and all that fun stuff, but. So I think. Uh... I'm just going to do all four tires on camera, and those who are the faithful warriors or gluttons for punishment who wants to watch me change all four tires, I mean, go right ahead. Okay. Once again, we'll torque them all down when we're done. Center cap, please. Hello? All right. Hey, that's locked in. I did put the cap on. Ready for lowerings. Here we go, then. And now it's time for the rear axles. Axle, plural, singular. Brain hurt much, too much sun. Oh, I've got to hit the record button, but it's literally just falls out now. Okay. Really, I still can't get the tire out? <laughs> what? You've got to be kidding me. Oh, this is going to be fun. What? Do I have to deflate the freaking tire first? Oh, I know what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to jack the bumper up, which would drop the axle down, which I may have to do. I think, yeah. Because right now I've got the axle, I've got the jack underneath the axle itself, and it's pushing it up into the frame. Traditionally, you had the old um, suicide, you know, bumper jacks, and that would lift up the back end, which would drop your front axle or your rear axle out of the wheel well. So that's why I'm getting hung up. So I'm going to have to get my bottle jack ah, and jack up via the springs, I guess. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm going to go for the front end of this one,
two weights right here. Peel off pretty easily, as long as you have the right tool. <laughs> okay. that in there try to inflate it About 43, 44, that's good enough. Yeah, let's have some fun and games. All right, here we go. Let's see what this one weighs out. Ooh, we got a one ounce on the inboard, but I saw something on the outboard. Ooh, three ounces. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, that's a that's a little bit more out of round. Okay, well. Well, believe it or not, I do have a three ouncer. So that'll be fine. We can definitely use that. We will do that. Camera's positioned on the inside, so let's do the inside first, eh? So we're gonna peas it, y'all. One, 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 one ouncer. Ooh, one ouncer, okay. Haven't used those yet, I don't think, here. So, that there. Actually, now I'm stuck with a problem. I think we're gonna have to run a two, one and a half ounces, because if you take a look at the three ounce, look how dirty and dingy that is against the chrome. I don't like that look. However, if I dip into my new stock and I have two shiny one and a half side by side, I think that works a little bit better with the chrome. So I think we'll go ahead and put two uh, one and a half ounces on here. There, maybe. Offset that just enough.
You see, see how clean that is? The new lead blends in with the steel rim. First, if you had the old ugly weight on here, I know the lighting's poor, but um, yeah, it just wouldn't look very good having a big, big, huge, ugly, ugly lead on there. It just when well, you guys knock it off. I gotta learn to start muting my phone before I start recording. Oh, come on now, for real, for real. As you can see, all right, that does it. What? Oh my goodness, there, phone's muted. Now you can see that the, uh, having two weights like that, I, I feel is better. It looks a lot better than having the single weight on there. Definitely, definitely hides a lot better. Okay. Oh, we're off. Okay, inside zero, so I got my, probably my outer weight's a little bit off, eh? Ooh. Yep, it's off by a little bit. Okay, so once, Another weight right there. See, I need to shift them, I think, over. All right, move the weights over a little bit. Let's try it again. So I moved them one way. If it's worse, then we gotta go the other way. Oh, for real, for real. Still one, eh? Okay, I need to go the other way. Actually, now let's do something different. I'm gonna put a big weight and a small weight. Actually, I'm gonna get this rebalanced. Find our zero again. And shake it up a little bit. Now they want, now this thing wants three and three quarters, almost four ounces now out of us. <laughs> um, okay. So, how do we want to do that? One, two, one, one, and seven, five. That is three, seventy-five. I'm going to try that, I guess. The inboard still balanced perfectly at zero. Show. One of his rims a little bit bent, I wonder. Okay, let's give that a try. Three and three quarter ounces, that's a, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> I expect that something out of a truck tire, maybe, with all the mass there is, but not a smaller passenger car tire, but let's see if this works. No, a little bit more, a little bit faster. There we go. Hmm. Crikey's, it's still changing on us. Half an ounce on the outside. What's the inboard say? Okay, I think I'm gonna have to pull all the weights off and just do a hard reset here because um, Yeah, that's not right <sighs> Let's just go for a hard reset Remove all the weights and try it again Okay, all weights removed. Here we go Let's just reset everything back to zero and try it again Okay M board, one and, one and a quarter, that changed a little bit. Okay. That's one and a quarter there. Outside, they want three, and we're back to the, our three even. So we'll do...
Okay, let's try this again. Hey there, now we're zeroed out. Excellent. Okay. See, sometimes if you're doing this and it shows you jumping weights clear on the other side of the tire, just hold up, hold up, hold up. Make sure your wheel is center. Take all the weights off and do it again. As you can see, we got zeroed out now. So now we're good to go. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Kind of moved about this specific tires because the white, the, the blue protective paint has already rubbed off during shipping. So it's kind of a little tainted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw this tire on the back since it's mostly covered by a fender skirt. You won't be able to see too much of it. This blue's coming off a little bit better. You guys weren't even in the shot, I'm sorry. Blue on this one's coming off a lot better. But that darker patch of the white wall, I can't get off too well. Yeah, well. Dude, you got some squeaky suspension there, bro. You need to fix those bushings. Now the question is, can we get this new tire into the skirt since I have more tread on it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna find out together. Come hither yonder. What in the world is going on around here? What is that? Oh, wait a minute. That battery? Oh, googly moogly. Hang on, I figured it out. Hold up, hold up. I got the whole world in my cart. It is time for the booga doogas. No, 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 no. Wow, this really is just a pain. Really sweat. I swear everything that's good is in the holy. I'm gonna. That does it. You forced me to play dirty. <laughs> well, I have fixed the battery with the chainsaw. Don't think about it too hard. Time to clean up my messies, and then we'll get this puppy fired up. <laughs> Quiet, Fido. Da 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 da. Working in a coal mine, going down, down, down. Working on the coal mine. <laughs> I'm about to slip down. Right then, here we go. Right. Verifying quantum fusion reactor stable and antimatter fuel cells at 100% capacity. Initializing the hyperstellar navigation AI. Set coordinates to the nearest wormhole. And we are on standby for engaging graviometric warp stabilizer. Arming phase plasma turrets and quantum disruptor cannons for defense against potential intergalactic threats initialized. No, I don't have a license for any of this. So let's go! No, I don't have insurance for that. Go touch some grass, stupid computer. Yeah, so we did get the tire up in the wheel well just fine. We got one more tire to go. I'm pulling for you guys. We're almost done. Knock it off. Well, sorry about that. The camera died. We got the fender skirt back on. We've got the tire showing itself nice and proudly. One more tire to go. Now with this, I have elected to actually jack up on the subframe. We'll see what kind of clearance how, or how easy it will be to get that tire off now. I'm still wondering now that I got it jacked up clear off the ground, if we can still get away with not removing the wheel skirt, but I, yeah, no, probably not. <laughs>
Ha <laughs> ha, we can. Yes. That's right. What? We don't have any whistle on this one. Oh, that's false advertising. Okay, we do not have any wheel weights on here, or they fell off. <laughs> So I've got one right here. That works. <laughs> oh, what a time to be alive. Hello. My Bluetooth speaker. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Over and under, come on now. There we go. All right? Okay, this will self inflate here. I think we got a winner. Hello. Snap, crackle, and pop. Ah, uh, about 38 pounds. Get a little bit more of a bump here. I wish this thing would fill up a little bit faster. Let's go faster. Woo, woo! Chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. I got 43. Good for me. Come on. Hoorah. Okay. Time for the spinny up part. I think this rim's not quite centered here. Looks like it's wobbling pretty good. Wow. 
No, it's tight on there. Hmm. Wow. This rim might be bent, I don't know. It's pretty wobbly. I have it centered on the cone here as best I absolutely can. Zeroed out on the machine. And you can see just by the wheel wobble that this thing is not, this rim is not quite right. You can kind of see it in and it pulls out and pulls out. Watch what happens when we spin it up a little bit. You can see how it wobbles right there. That's not good. <laughs> I think that rim's a bit bent. Another tail feature is um, it wants us to put three and a half ounces on the inboard and the outboard. They want uh, four and a half ounces, which is absolutely ridiculous. So that tells me as long as my tire is centered on my machine correctly, um, yeah, this is a bent rim, or at least out of round. I don't know if it ever got bunked at the time of its life or not. I know you, with wire spokes, you can actually adjust them, but, um, adjust the tautness of it, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can balance it out, but this, uh, this, this, uh, wheel is a bit on the, but on the wavy side, that's that's not good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's centered on the rim. Well, oh well, we'll have to try to make do with what we have. Let's just try a three and a half. Now, fortunately, we this is three point five. We got uh, one piece of a three point five that we can actually use for the M board, so we can solve that immediately. Yeah, that's uh, let's see here. We're looking at this one here. Right about that's well that's inboard. Oh the outboard is let me do that again. Wow, this thing's getting worse, guys. Yikes. Now it's saying five, almost six ounce weight on the outside, on the inside. Four, wow. Yeah, no, this is not good. <laughs> this is not a good rim. We'll try to make it work, but let me verify again that I'm absolutely center most as I practically can. Yeah, this rim is whacked. <sighs> wow. Um, dang. I don't know if I can balance this thing out or not. <laughs> um, crikeys. All right, well, let's just drop it in gear and go. So three and a half... So I need a one ounce as well. I don't know, man. There's a lot of wheel wobble here. I don't know, guys. Now, what the heck are we going to do for that? Um, I want to use the clean weights. That's two, four... Can't use six. So two ounce, two ounce, and 1.75 ounces. Yikes. <laughs> That's a lot of weights. This is the most I've ever done on tires as far as my little channel. <laughs> So we're gonna see how well this balances out or not. I'm not I'm not hoping for much, people. Honestly, I'm I'm not hoping for much, but I'm give it a try at least. <sighs> yeah, we're 
we're gonna be chasing we're gonna be chasing this problem down. Half an ounce on that side. Well, I'm going to go try adding those two extra weights and we'll see what happens here. This isn't good. <laughs> Let's try it again. Oh! Oh, wow. We're zeroed out, actually. Oddly enough, that is... Computer says that's good, but dang. Let me zoom you in on the tire tread. Maybe I can show you how wavy this thing is. Okay, you see that, guys? Let's just sun spin this up a little bit for you. See how wobbly that is? That is, that's a bent or out of round rim. That's not good. I'm really honestly surprised the computer was able to zero that out. I'm honestly really surprised. Because that's, uh, that's not good. <laughs> that is not good at all. Yikes. Um, note to the new owner, I'm afraid this, uh, spoke rim is, um, a little bit, uh, a little bit on the used and abused side, possibly. But, technically, the computer was able to zero it out. Yeah, we'll just have to go with that, I guess. If you ever look for people who have, uh, if you look on tires, you see a whole bunch of weights here and a weight over there. Yeah, that's usually not a good sign. So we've got three weights here, plus a weight on that side. And then we have a weight. we got a couple of big monster weights there and one weight there. But computer claims it's zero. Might still have vibration issues. I don't know. But Honestly, I'm not really surprised this could be bent. I mean, all of the weight of support of the wheel of the car is resting on these wires, so really spokes, if you will. I'm not really surprised. <laughs> but um, I'll get us up and down the road. Wow, on camera, that looks pretty smashing. Smashing darlings. behave yourself. Haha! <laughs> That's right. Look at that tread depth. Oh, feels like you're looking at something naughty. Mm, love me some tread depth.
feel a lot safer now that this car has got some good rubber on it. Now for the last video we'll do for this car on this channel is a ride with me video. So we'll try to get a lot of fun different camera angles. Uh, I'll probably, um, it won't be anything glamorous like going to the ocean or like what I did with the 69 convertible uh, Oldsmobile. But we'll still try to get you guys some camera angles and, um, you know, hear that big 440 roll up and down the road. And then hopefully soon thereafter, uh, the new owner will come collect it and make it his and continue on uh, making it his own and continue fixing on it. But it runs and drives now. We're happy with it. Excellent platform for the new owner to work on and make it his own. So we'll see you guys in the next installment on this car when we drive up and down the road. Cruising for a bruising. Mm. You see you guys later. This is a standard lug nut. This is an anti theft lug nut. And of course, 99% of the time when you buy a car, they don't have this socket line anywhere in the car, the trunk, the cigarette lighter, the ashtray. I gotta do that again. It wouldn't be in the cigarette lighter. The cigarette lighter is the cigarette lighter's own entity. Okay, there's one right here. Oops. I don't want the shooting menu. Get out of here. I don't want the menu. No. X. Ah, it whistles. Look at that. <laughs> I'm a five year old, all right? You probably shouldn't have a camera. But, oh well. It's not illegal yet. If you really want to cheat. Oh, that works too. But. Where's my turntable? Oh, turntable's not even plugged in. You idiot. Hold, please. Han says to hold, please. Thank you. Oh, I think I had to. And you shut the doors with not right on the lane. Blinded by the light. Rotating. Oh, no, 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 don't come off there. Right, rotating. No, no, I don't want that button. No, I want the rotated thingy button. There. Oh, sorry about that, folks. The camera died. Um, well, we got her on here. Looking way too night shot off. Ay, ay, ay.